lot of investors, well, predominantly retail, which are higher in quantity than institutional, seem to be of the mindset that Tesla will continue to grow 50%, despite that not being the case, judging by Tesla's past history, of 70% compounded annual growth rates, and despite nearly 100% growth in deliveries this year, and what must be very likely around a further 100% growth in 2022. Judging by what is happening in Shanghai, and with this 50% more potential we hear about with Fremont, and even if the two new factories take a while to ramp up, along with the required accompanying battery production, then I think there is a high possibility Tesla delivers 2 million vehicles by next year, or the end of next year, how so much more will be revealed, not just with Tesla, but the whole industry as a whole. Now, the math of 50% annual growth actually is surprisingly easy. All you do is add half of the deliveries from the previous year onto the next year, and voila, you've calculated 50% growth year over year, right? Very simple. Well, when you calculate that, it comes in at 10 million deliveries a year by 2026. If we account for 2 million in 2022, that would mean that by that stage, Tesla would be the biggest auto company by unit sold. Oh wait, but Toyota is already there now. And perhaps in five years time, Toyota could have ramped up a bit too, right? No, all legacy autos are ramping down because it's somewhat of a zero sum game. If Tesla sells a car, it means that consumers didn't buy a car elsewhere i.e. Tesla is eating up everyone else's market share. These sales are mainly coming from legacy autos. Sure, some of these micro EVs in China are perhaps establishing new niches of automotive that were not there before, but they're not taking away from legacy autos market share so much. All right, so what if each sale of a Tesla is worth $20,000 gross profit to Tesla, including margins and any other extras or upgrades? And bear in mind, there is a high possibility that most Teslas will have FSD soon enough when it comes into fruition. And let's assign just a $10,000 value to each FSD customer, even if it's a subscription, despite the car generating significantly more than that over its lifetime. I mean, we could work out average selling price and gross margins, but in the end, that would only be to establish what the average gross profit would be per vehicle. But to give you an idea, 40% margin of a $50,000 car is $20,000. Remember, we are even including FSD in there too. So this could be argued as low, but we're also including the full product mix of vehicles, including potentially some compact sales in there as well. This is meant to be just a quick and easy view of what 50% growth really means. You might say that as time goes on, there will be less margin per vehicle and a lower selling price. On the other hand, Tesla are only likely to reduce their costs and efficiencies further, whilst also improving the value of the car by offering more features, thus increasing demand and what people will pay for a Tesla. Remember, we might see all sorts of ways of Tesla cutting costs, like Teslas delivering themselves, saving an instant thousand dollars or so just like that. Now, Tesla's OPEX is sitting about $6 billion a year, producing just 1 million cars, and it's possible that this will increase when Tesla grows more, although there will be less in the way of depreciation and amortization as we go on, due to sheer capital expense on these latest factories. But either way, if OPEX did increase, it would not be at the same rate as production. This is due to the economies of scale. Do I say economies of scale in every video? Maybe. You know why. Tesla are truly going to have incredible economies of scale. I'm placing a 30% weighting factory relative to what Tesla have in the way of OPEX now to further growth relative to production, to offer a rough guess as to what OPEX would be for each year relative to production. Like always, this is for indicative purposes only. Well, in five years time, when we break past the 10 million units a year point, we have a gross profit of $200 billion with a $33 billion in OPEX. Okay, that OPEX does sound ridiculous, but so be it leaving us close to an EBIT of approximately $180 billion. This is just for the vehicle business. Now, this is earnings before interest and tax, but I mean, look at these numbers. Interest is gonna be minimal. And amortization too, if you include that. I mean, even if a new factory costs $10 billion to build, well, that's less than a month's pay at this stage. Maybe this comes to a net profit of $150 billion. And this doesn't factor in robo taxis either. If you want to place a P ratio of 30 on that, then that's a stock price in the mid $4,000 just for the auto sales business with FSD. And quote from Elon on Battery Day, I think we've got a good chance of achieving this actually before 2030, but I'm highly confident that we could do it by 2030. He may be talking about 2028 or 2029 to hit this stage, which would be totally in line with 50% growth starting at 2 million from 2022. But even if I put in 50% growing from 2021, i.e. only a dismal 1.35 million units delivered for 2022, then we still get this 25 million figure before 2030. But I think a lot has changed since battery day too. I don't think Tesla or Elon had decided that they will inevitably double down so much on in-house LFP batteries. 
But look at this trajectory. We know 20 million vehicles is a huge milestone and somewhat parallel with the three terawatt hour milestone or 3000 gigawatt hours a year, which is meant to be split by about half with cars and half with energy. Well, 1,500 gigawatt hours for cars, the average pack is 60 kilowatt hours, which I think it might be smaller by that stage as batteries are going to get smaller and fewer in vehicles as efficiencies improve, charging speeds increase, and superchargers are in more places, along with more compact sales. But even 1500 gigawatt hours with an average of 60 kilowatt hour battery packs comes in at 25 million vehicles a year. But I have a feeling that Tesla could even get away with 40 to 50 kilowatt hour battery packs in the compact variants, and that could be half of their sales. And sure, there might be variants of the compact like a compact crossover, two door and four door. But think of the competition as we go through this growth. At a guess, half of Tesla's production will be for the North American market. What's gonna happen in five years time when Tesla have about 30% or more of the market share of the US auto market? Well, who's gonna be hit the hardest? This is a very large number of cars for a competitor to suddenly come into your market and eat up a huge amount of your share. Has the Cybertruck hurt F-150 sales dramatically? So much so that Ford's had to close down its production lines in Detroit, or Dearborn, should I say. That's basically Ford's only profitable car they make. If they lose their economies of scale on that, then they're in big trouble. I think Legacy will lose some profit in China too, of the Chinese EVs likely gunning for them. But Ford would have been feeling this pinch for a couple of years time, and had possibly already downsized as a result. Then what about GM? What do they have left to clamber onto? The White House? I would say BMW, Audi, Mercedes were being affected heavily too. Tesla is still a luxury auto and beats the Germans on performance and value. And if Tesla are bringing out the compact version, then Toyota will fill that the most. Now bear in mind, the 70% growth we have been seeing from Tesla, well, this was limited by the rate at which the likes of Panasonic and LG had made 2170 batteries and 18652. And recently, we've seen the growth continue with CATL's LFP batteries. But the point is, Tesla's growth was at the rate at which others could make their batteries. And as we know, Tesla came up with the 4680 battery since. I'm not even sure how long that took or how long they were working on it, but surely years of R&D before battery day or Project Roadrunner. Now, Tesla will be able to make their 4680 batteries at a rate of around 100 times as many per squared foot when compared to Giga Nevada alone. And likely that pace will continue to increase too. And then my thoughts are that the Tesla's LFP batteries will be even faster again. As Elon even says, about three quarters of cars will use them, implying that Tesla need three times as many LFP batteries than they do 4680 batteries. Just for cars, of course, Tesla also need at least as many batteries for energy storage as they do for cars, which would thus imply seven times more LFP batteries than 4680 nickel batteries. You see, we're given numbers from Tesla and Elon that we can use to further elaborate inferences and draw conclusions and assumptions. But if we're thinking 500 gigawatt hours of 4680 batteries from Berlin and Texas by perhaps the end of around 2023, and we need seven times as many LFP batteries, well, that's gonna be a lot of batteries then, isn't it? So what I'm getting at is that if Tesla achieved 70% growth rate with third party suppliers, then could it be plausible to think that perhaps there is a chance that Tesla might be able to grow at an even faster rate when they start making their own batteries at a much faster pace. CATL is still using the prismatic form factor, which is a lot slower than cylindrical when it comes to manufacturing, yet CATL have high ambitions for battery production too. Elon has hinted that 70% growth may be possible to continue at the shareholder meeting. That may not be so sustainable, but just out of interest, starting at 2 million for 2022, we would then hit 10 million by 2025 and 40 million sometime in 2028 with 70% growth. FYI, I think, 40 million is possibly the limit for Tesla, especially if we include rabbit taxis. I could be wrong. I mean, we have a 2 billion global fleet to replace and people might decide to buy an electric car because they want an electric car rather than because they need to replace their car. But we'll see. Like I say, this company has barely begun. We haven't even produced over a million cars in one year yet. But look at it like this. By 2025, perhaps Fremont and Shanghai are surely producing a combined 2 million units a year, perhaps with some further expansion. Berlin, 2 million a year, and Texas, 4 million a year. Well, that's 8 million right there, with no new factories over four years time. 10 million by 2025 is not impossible. The main thing is the batteries, and look how fast Tesla will be able to make batteries over the rest of the world. But I can't see the rest of the EV industry contributing overly to the transition. Tesla will likely have two thirds of the market share if we remove the micro EVs. Either way, even 50% growth looks good from a shareholder point of view. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.